Remember the 2020 election and how late that night, right, it became pretty clear that Joe Biden was on a trajectory to win that election. And Donald Trump comes out and gives a news conference saying that the election's been robbed from him. And then over the next few days and weeks, Donald Trump keeps harping on that the election was stolen from him and he just couldn't get any elite support, right? Republicans, by and large, did not follow him. And th there were no great lawyers who were willing to take up his cause. And his whole operation to try to deny the election result was just abysmal. I mean, it was just ludicrous. It was just schlock, right? And I was thinking about that. And then after January 6th, how overwhelmingly Republicans abandoned him, wanted nothing to do with Trump. Uh, elites 100% abandoned Trump after January 6th. He was banned on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all across social media, just universal condemnation. And there's a very different reaction today to his conviction, right? Republican legal elites overwhelmingly did not side. 100% of Republican legal elites did not side with Donald Trump in his challenge for the 2020 election. But overwhelmingly, they are siding with Donald Trump with regard to his 34 felony convictions in New York City. I mean, they are just solidly lining up behind him. Now, the non-Republican legal experts and mainstream media journalists covering the trial, right, they are obviously happy that uh, Donald Trump was convicted and they don't make the same points that uh, Republican legal elites are making about how the trial was a travesty. But there is one key word that the dominant liberal left elites are using, and that is that the prosecutor Alvin Bragg's legal theory underlying the case is weak and is the most likely grounds for appeal and the most likely successful grounds for appeal. So they don't like to talk very much about how the conviction of Trump was based on a very weak legal theory. But when they're being honest, like Patrick Healy in the New York Times reacting, and I played that, uh, I believe, Thursday or Friday, right? He, he said that the legal theory underlying the Alvin Bragg conviction of Donald Trump for these 34 felonies is weak. So that's, that's the word that the, the mainstream media elite will use with regard to Alvin Bragg's legal theory underlying the Donald Trump trial in New York that recently concluded weak. So th there seems to be a widespread understanding on you know, all sorts of different uh, legal experts that the whole basis of this Trump conviction is weak. And so we have here in America, anyone can be a felon. People who mouth the cliche that no one is above the law should be careful what they wish for. That's true. Like if you've ever shared a, a prescription medication with someone, right, you've committed a, a crime, right? If you have borrowed a Valium from someone, Right? If you've ever given an overly high estimate to the IRS on the clothes and furniture that you donated to Goodwill, right? have you ever cheated on your taxes? Have you ever exaggerated anything on your taxes? Is there anything on any of your laptops containing an application for a loan right, in which you've overstated the value of some assets? Right? That's fraud. Right? And if you then mail that application, right, that's mail fraud. So every American could be convicted of a felony for something they've done that week. All right, we've got state, federal, criminal laws as limitless as the stars in the heavens, right? So the worst thing a prosecutor can do other than take bribes is to prosecute people instead of crimes, right? This is from the Wall Street Journal. So in states like New York, we have prosecutors running for public office, not by promising to stop carjackings or to put meth dealers in prison or to crack down on violent criminals. Right? Instead, we have prosecutors running, vote for me, I'll find a way to convict Donald Trump, right? That's an abuse of power, right? It means vote for me and I'll examine every email, every statement, everything that Donald Trump has done. I'll subpoena his laptop, his smartphone, his lawyers, right? I'll have a team of lawyers and algorithms search the criminal codes till I find a way to get him. I mean, do you want to live under such a regime? Right? They can get any one of us. Right. And so in 2016, FBI Director James Comey held a press conference explaining why he wasn't prosecuting Hillary Clinton for mishandling classified information. Right. And he said, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. No reasonable prosecutor would have brought the case that Alvin Bragg brought. And we had a special prosecutor investing, investigating Joe Biden and his misuse of classified documents. And... Uh, Joe Biden clearly broke the law. He could have been prosecuted. What was the reason he wasn't prosecuted? Because the, the uh, 
special special prosecutor said that uh, he just didn't remember, right? That he was like an old man who wasn't very cognitively sharp, and, and that was the, that was the basis for for not bringing for not b- bringing a prosecution. So any one of us, right? We, we can be convicted.